Hello everyone, I'm Wade, your cinephile host. Have you ever thought about time travel? Would you travel to the future or to the past? In scientific terms, time traveling is all about relativity. But today, we go beyond science. We are talking about a movie with a paradoxical of fates, titled Predestination. In Chinese, we call this Ming Ding, Ji Yuan or Yuan Fen. Regardless of your beliefs, I'm sure we can all agree that there are many things in this world that are outside of our control. These things may very well all be predestined. The movie begins in the year 1975. A time traveling agent suffers serious burns to his face while trying to disarm a bomb. It appears that the same man who tried to stop the agent from disarming the bomb later assisted the time traveler to get to his time machine, allowing him to travel forward in time to post-hospital treatment. As a result, this changed the appearance of the agent. After his recovery, he disguised as a bartender to gain insights of people. He scouts and waits for a man with extraordinary capabilities with no ties to family or friends. One night, such a man wandered into the bar, but it wasn't until later that the agent find out that the man actually used to be a woman and she struggled during her transition in becoming a man. Do you ever feel depressed? Uh, what do you mean? Sad, empty at times. Sometimes, I guess I feel like there's something out of balance, like I'm living in somebody else's body. Her name was Jane. She had both sets of sex organs from birth. When Jane was a baby, she was kidnapped by a mysterious man from the hospital and placed at an orphanage. As an orphan, she had excellent academic and physical capabilities, but she had no friends. So when she bumped into a guy that thought like her, she was instantly drawn to him. Their conversation ignited their intimate relationship. Well, you know what they say about good things happening to those who wait. But only the things left behind by those who hustle. I was thinking the exact same thing. What are the odds? What are the odds? Jane would later find out that the man she fell in love with is actually her future self. But neither version of Jane would know this at the time. Following this love affair, the female version of Jane gets pregnant. This causes her to lose her job, while the guy version of Jane suddenly disappears without a trace. After giving birth, Jane received disturbing news from the doctor. Due to the complication during the delivery, they had to remove her female sex organs, but they did manage to save the male sex organs, which forces Jane to become a man. Worse news came when she found out that her baby was stolen from the hospital. All this caused Jane to become bitter, and she began to hate the very man she once loved for ruining her life. Yeah, it's easier to destroy something. Kill somebody? You think you could do that? Maybe. I see it in your eyes too. That bitterness can take over. It can. Life goes on. Jane renamed herself John to better fit into her now changing body. She buys a typewriter to set herself up as a public stenographer in New York. She also starts writing confession stories of women with the pen name Unmarried Mother. This all led to the meet at the bar, where the time traveling agent, disguised as a bartender, found the male version of Jane to have the same bitterness in her eyes. So Jane, who is now John, became the perfect candidate to take over his time traveling job. While John continues to reveal secrets to the bartender, she's met with an even greater surprise when he reveals his true identity and presents her with the opportunity to travel back in time to get her revenge. When John travels back with the time traveling agent to seek revenge, it's then he realizes that he is actually the guy who left Jane all those years back. 
In the meanwhile, the agent goes to stop the so-called fizzle bomber, only to realize that John was the one who initially tried to disarm the bomb and had his face burnt. After the reconstruction surgery, he was in fact the very same time-traveling agent who disguised as the bartender. With this discovery, he realized that it is predestined for him to travel back in time to 1964, to be the one who steals the baby in order to set the chains of events in motion. The superior of these secret agents, Robertson, shows up at the hospital as well and encourages John to accept his predestined paradoxical fate. The snake that eats its own tail forever and ever. You are here to create history and influence what is to come. But I don't think I can do it. Understand, you are more than an agent, you're a gift, and given to the world through a predestination paradox. You're the only one, free from history, ancestry. What this means is that the agent is the beginning and the end of himself. We get a small hint from the lyrics of a song later in the movie. So, he steals the baby and places the child in front of the steps of an orphanage in 1945. He then jumps forward to 1963 to guide John to leave Jane behind, as prearranged by fate. They travel together to 1985, the present, and John officially became the replacement time-traveling agent, while the bartender prepares to retire in 1974, New York. He first heads back to the bar to grab a drink, while the song I'm My Own Grandpa played in the background. With the error that occurred on the time machine came some document files with insights to the Fizzle Bomber's whereabouts. So, John follows the clues and end up at a coin laundromat. To his surprise, the terrorist is in fact a future version of himself. The Fizzle Bomber claims to be saving thousands more lives with his bombings, so he is doing it for the greater good. But John denies this and repeatedly denies that he will ever become him. What if I put him in front of you? The man who ruined your life. Forget all that. We can have a future together. Would you kill him? To save thousands. You want to know what we're going to do tomorrow? No. There and then, John shoots the fizzle bomber to death. In the end, John, the agent, finally realizes the truth, that this is a paradoxical fate. He is not only the beginning of himself, but he was also the end. It was the same person all along. The abandoned child, Jane the mother, John the man, to the bartender agent all the way to the fizzle bomber. It was all a predestined paradox. This is an interesting yet confusing movie to say the least. But that pretty much captures the mystery of fate. This movie shows us that some things are inevitable and perhaps all of our fate is already predestined. Yet, even if this were true, none of us would sit around and just wait for destiny to happen to us. We would do whatever we could to choose our own destiny, just as Jane did. But are we able to change what is already predestined? What do you think, Ruby? I personally think that we make our own decisions and are in charge of our future. However, it is undeniable that we face inevitable events every day. Do you think you can explain the word inevitable to us, Wade? Yeah, let's see. I believe it's something that's certain to happen and cannot be avoided, right? Yes. If you want to describe something that can be prevented, simply remove the prefix. In this case, you will get evitable. Right. So prefix can change the meaning of the word. Mm -hmm. So prefix is letters placed before the root of a word, such as on, in, m. Some examples include accurate and inaccurate, capable and incapable, complete and incomplete. Also, a word we mentioned earlier, deniable and undeniable. Oh, yeah. I have more. So like certain, uncertain, able, unable, kind, unkind, possible, impossible. I can do this all day. That's not. Okay. Hey, I couldn't help but notice we were talking about fate in our last episode. Do you think this is just a coincidence or maybe it's predestined by a greater power? 
Well, if there is a greater power, what is it trying to make us understand with these episodes? I guess that's yet to be uncovered. Okay, I guess for now, I'm Wade. I'm Ruby. I hope you've learned something useful in this episode of Cinephile as I did. You can find more on the Fun Day website. Let's, Let's make, make every day, day a, a fun day. day. Are you lost? No, I'm looking for someone. Thanks. I'll just wait. Well, you know what they say about good things happening to those who wait. But only the things left behind by those who hustle. I was thinking the exact same thing. What are the odds? Where are the odds? Are you okay? You're not how I imagined you'd look. Do I know you? You're beautiful. Someone should have told you that.